So we will jump into our session in Korea. Uh, we will have uh, five individuals from KIDP, the Korean Institute um, of Design Promotion. So allow me to introduce our moderator for this session. We have Unju Meng, who's the Executive Managing Director of Korea Institute of Design Promotion, KIDP, joining us, a national organization affiliated with the Korean Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy, and a longstanding WDO member. She is in charge of design R&D, design education and training, awards and exhibits, international businesses, and KIDP's overseas offices in China and in Vietnam. Unju serves as a regional advisor of WDO and has since October 2017, following her uh, two terms as an executive board member. Welcome Unju and welcome to your team as well. Thank you, Natalie. Um, I'm gonna share all uh, my slides. Can you see the slides? Not yet. Yeah. Great. Do you all can see the slide? Yes. Okay. Uh, Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the Lab of Diversity. Uh, this is science session of the 24 hours continuous uh, virtual talk. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that's a mistake. I'm gonna. Yeah. So uh, Natalie introduced uh, this talk will consists of uh, four speakers uh, from KIDP. Uh, thanks to Natalie, I think uh, she uh, already explained about uh, KIDP, co-host of this session. Uh, yes, we, KIDP is a member of uh, WDO since 1973, uh, public institution for uh, design founded in 1970. Uh, currently, the, our location is uh, like this, so uh, about 180 members based in five locations in Korea and uh, also three locations in uh, uh, China and Beijing. Uh, I, in celebration of World Industrial Design Day, uh, it is really uh, honored to take part in this session as a moderator, uh, as introduced by Min Jumeng. And um, let me introduce our other speakers first. Uh, there will be a four speakers from us, uh, Chong Man Song, Head of the Global Extension uh, Division, and Min Young Park, Manager of the Global Extension Division and Nara Tho, uh, lead manager uh, of uh, educational division and in her lead manager from the same uh, division. With the topic, uh, we will dive in with uh, my colleague with cultural and gender diversity, uh, specifically in Korea. Uh, to examine and share how the workplaces in Korea has been changing and how people and community in the field of design or even a broader society or nation have been changing regarding uh, the gender and culture diversity issues. Uh, we take one sample organization, which is KIDP, because I think KIDP can reflect uh, workplaces or uh, design community in Korea. That's why our speakers are all uh, from KIDP. The four have different backgrounds, experiences, uh, gender, and ages. Uh, they will share their uh, stories, practical stories, experiences, and lessons of thoughts uh, regarding gender or cultural uh, diversity, including the current situation of issue 
in Korea, as well as relevant initiatives and activities uh, taking place at KRDP and also in Korea. Let's get started uh, with the gender issue first. Uh, recently, uh, in March this year, World Economic Forum released the Global Gender Gap Report 2021. According to this report, Korea is ranked number 102nd among 156 countries benchmark. It is a shocking result and disgraceful, not only for us, especially to me as a uh, Korean female, but also uh, to all of us regarding, regardless of our gender. So if we look at economic index, such as GDP or GDP per capita, Korea has been ranked high, uh, global top 10 in GDP, or ranking uh, 26th in GDP per capita. In comparison with those economic status or achievements Korea has gained, uh, global ranking 102nd in global gender gap uh, index was way too below. And it means Korea has a long way to go in terms of gender equity. But certainly, uh, gender gap has been uh, uh, closing uh, significantly, especially during uh, the past 20 or 30 years. Uh, my personal experiences at KRDP also reflect the evolution of women at work in Korea uh, or gender equality. Uh, more than 20 years ago, uh, if you look at this, uh, the, the pie chart, Majority of gra uh, graduates from the design school are female stu students, still it is, uh, but there was very few female workers, even fewer female uh, leadership at work. I was always only female at the table back then. However, as time goes by, gender gaps at work seem to be getting closer and closer, and gender equity and women design leadership is also getting balanced or better proposition uh, at work. So uh, now I'd like to invite one of our speakers, uh, Nara, to tell us more about the evolution of uh, gender gap, especially uh, female leadership in uh, Korea. Nara, over to you. Thank you. Um, I need to share my screen first, so hold on. Hey, hi everyone, um, I'm Nara, and I currently oversee the International Design Education Program here at KIDP, such as the Global Design Internship Program and the International Integrated Design Camp. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is about how the female leadership has um, evolved in Korea as a whole. And compared to just a decade ago, hold on, why is my screen up? Okay. Compared to just a decade ago, the number of women in executive positions in Korea um, has been on the increase. And just within KIDP, um, we just ha um, we had our first female president and CEO whose term just ended. And not only that, the number of female executives has also increased. And five years ago, there were only five female executives, whereas um, today we have seven. And our board members has also seen an increase in female members with the numbers rising 8.9% uh, from 28.6% uh, in 2016 to 37.5% in 2021. Um, recent data from the corporate tractor called the CEO score, it shows that the, um, there are only 4.5% of board members in Korea that are female, while the figure of that is 30% in the US. And as of um, 2017, um, within the top 500 companies in Korea, only um, 172 of them employed um, women executives, which with a total of 454 women executives who comprise 3% of all executives. And that figure was definitely an increase of 0.7% um, from 2014 and 0.3% when compared to 2016 but still 328 companies did not have any women executives on their board. Um, then why is there only a limited number of female executives here in Korea? 
the, um, one of the, according to research, um, one of the biggest barriers was, is the ma still um, male oriented society and lack of adequate support policies and systems to support female em employees is another issue that needs to be resolved. Um, the strong belief that women's, women are the people that needs to be, um, need to take the main role when caring for the household and children is what's holding us back from getting promoted. And women returning back to work after giving birth or after childcare are put behind and left behind, making the number of female candidates for promotion smaller and smaller. Still, efforts have been made by both the private and public sectors. Um, the Korean government launched new policies to prevent women from having to give up their careers to take care of their children. And in 2006, um, the affirmative action policy was introduced to um, dismiss discrimination against female employees at work. And for um, government affiliated institutes like KIDP, um, the ratio of female executives on our board of directors is applied to an annual evaluation that is conducted by the government each year. But still, we may have to adopt stronger actions like the um, European Commission where they introduced the Women in Board Pledge for Europe in 2011 where it was made mandatory for companies where more than 250 employees had to allocate 40% of its mem board members to female members. And I'd like to end my um, speech here. And I think um, my colleague Mina will have more, uh, more about the design industry side. Thank you, thank you, Nara. Uh, Nara will explain about the, the current situation, current status of uh, female leadership in Korea uh, using lots of figures. Um, then I'd like to uh, broaden our topic uh, into the, the, the gender issue related uh, trends and prospects, uh, asking uh, uh, Minyoung. So, Minyoung, are you, are you ready to share with us? Yes, I am. All right, let me share my slides first. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Minyoung Park from Global Expansion Division at KIDP. It's nice to meet you all. I've been managing international cooperation and in different global projects at KIDP since 2012. And I'm currently in charge of international PR of the organization to help elevate the global visibility of KIDP. My talk will be about gender diversity in Korea, the trends and prospects. I'll first introduce you relevant changes currently taking place in Korea, and then move on to talk about responsibilities of designers for the future. I typed in the word gender on the web portal, and as you can see, I found this long list of articles. They were related to a wide range of different sectors of the society, and I found the words on the right side, such as gender neutral and genderless being mentioned repeatedly. So I think you can guess from this that gender is such a controversial and important issue in Korea at this moment. Of these many areas that the gender issue is related to, I've selected some stories and examples that could be insightful for us designers. I think this can be observed in many other countries besides Korea, products for girls being produced in pink and for boys in blue. Recently, the National Human Rights Commission of Korea stated that children could learn gender role stereotypes and perceive that a certain job or work is associated with a certain gender. And this also could influence children's future behavior and even lead to aggravation of gender discrimination. The manufacturers were advised to make improvements in their products to be more gender neutral and not be classifying genders by colors. Another movement observed is that discussions are becoming bigger and bigger about gender neutral restrooms. You can see in the pictures below that some buildings actually started to have these restrooms now in Korea. Diversity Korea, a nonprofit organization, emphasized that these restrooms would contribute to breaking the gender binary and cultivating a culture that cares for all creating a more safe and inclusive society for everyone. 
With the millennials and Gen Z becoming a significant demographic group in Korea, they're not, they now have a voice to demand society to be more sensitive towards gender diversity. It shows in these advertisement images of beauty companies. Most of these companies are new in the market, but they are doing relatively well by marketing themselves gender neutral. This strategy worked well because it, there is now a perception, especially among younger generations, that being gender neutral is only natural, trendy, and cool. Within the Korean design industry, there is now this community called Feminist Designer Social Club, which was started in 2018 and now grew up to having 180 member designers. They define themselves as a community that creates a new order from a feminist perspective and address issues of the gender imbalance in the industry that makes the female designers disappear from the workplace. They hold different events, run podcasts and YouTube channels and build a network among members to challenge and change the, the status quo. From these trends observed in Korea at this current moment, we can predict that people are opening up and making different efforts to embrace gender diversity in Korea. And I think the speed of the changes will only get faster and faster. Now moving on to the second part of my talk, responsibilities of designers for the future. I would like to talk about these voice assistants, both the global and Korean ones. You may you may all are familiar with the fact that they've been criticized over the past years for having female sounding names and providing female voices only. These companies have made improvements, so now male voices are also available. However, the default is still set to female voice. UNESCO pointed out in their report that in many communities, this reinforces commonly held gender biases that women are subservient and tolerant of poor treatment. And I found this blog posting just by accident in preparing for my talk. It was originally written in Korean. Uh, the posting is dated uh, February, 2020, so it's pretty recent. And it clearly shows you what UNESCO was concerned about. The writer writes about the voice assistant, quote, it's better than my wife because the assistant responded to the writer every single time without any hint of frustration. The writer was also able to distinctly recognize that the voice was a female. There has been this effort to suggest an alternative voice assistant and a genderless voice named Q was developed. It's been created as a next step towards ending gender bias and fostering more inclusivity within voice technology. There should be more efforts made in this direction, especially for us designers in designing new products or services. I would like to share this piece of writing with you from one of my favorite Korean writers, which is highly relevant to our topic today, diversity. Uh, the last paragraph says, consensus on what constitutes discrimination has been repeatedly renegotiated throughout history. Few people would call themselves racist or sexist. However, it is easy to unconsciously make outdated prejudice remarks or acts if one does not keep learning about new standards regarding discrimination. As society's sensitivity to discrimination and diversity becomes more delicate, the number of citizens who are unfairly excluded will decrease. In concluding my talk, I'll share with you my thoughts on what responsibilities of designers should be for a better future. We designers need to take a responsibility that corresponds to the extent of influence and impact we have as creators of products, graphics, spaces, services, etc., that people encounter so frequently in their everyday lives. The coming future with the advancement of technology will urge us to tackle brand new problems or existing problems in brand new ways. In doing so, we should keep a keen eye on how the world is changing around us and how people of different traits, characteristics, and beliefs view these changes to embrace diversity in our designs. 
If we fail to be sensitive towards diversity, our designs may alienate or dis disrespect certain groups of people regardless of our intentions. Let us harness our influence for a positive impact and make the world a more inclusive place for all. Thank you. Thank you, Minya. Uh, Minya covered uh, uh, such a um, broad of the issues, including uh, gender discrimination and the gender uh, neutral trends in Korea and the responsibilities of the designers uh, of the future. Uh, it, it is really touched and I think we need more time to talk uh, about this issue. Uh, maybe in the near future, if we have a chance. Uh, because uh, the, our session is aiming to talk about uh, two topics, the gender diversity and uh, cultural diversity. Uh, due to the, the limited time, I think we'd better move on to the other topic, which is uh, cultural diversity. The uh, diversity, cultural diversity really matters. And I think the cultural diversity fuels innovation. And, uh, and I think in this issue, especially education is really important and how uh, uh, make people uh, understand better other cultures uh, and offer the opportunities uh, or expose them to those kind of a multicultural uh, uh, experience opportunities. So I'd like to uh, invite Jungman and Inho uh, to uh, talk about what they do at work uh, regarding this uh, cultural diversity issue at KRDT. Jungman. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Jungman Song, uh, head of Global Expansion, Expansion Division. We have been supporting small and medium-sized companies to export their products uh, and services. As a moderator said, I'll talk about the cultural diversity. I would like to share with you some examples that our division have been conducted since 2010 as some examples of the cultural diversity. First is the Korea ASEAN design sharing. For the design sharing, six countries, including Korea, have participated in various design activities. For example, during the design sharing, we held the design seminar, conducted design education for companies and designers, uh, took part in design ex exhibitions, In addition, we had an opportunity to share ideas between Korean designers and ASEAN designers. Also, since 2011, we have been operating the ASEA Design Sharing Council meeting. It is consisted of representatives of design sharing organizations from Korea and ASEAN countries. Despite the COVID-19, we held the, this council meeting online last year. Through this council meeting, we discussed the various design collaborations with ASEAN countries. Finally, we held a tourism service design workshop in 2014 and 2018. Designers from ASEAN countries and Korean participate in this workshop to gather some ideas for improving tourism services. As seen in some cases, we have prepared various design activities for designers and CEOs from Korea and ASEAN countries to understand the cultural diversity. We live in an era where cultural diversity should be embraced and applied. Next, my colleague Iino will share with you about another cultural diversity cases. Ino, please. Uh, yeah.
Uh, hi, my name is Inho, and I'm, I'm responsible for education and training division at KIDP. And also, I am core member of Young Design Soccer of WDU. So I'm very happy to participate as one of the speakers for this event. Um, okay, now let's move on to cultural diversity in Korea. Uh, as we already know, uh, it is very important for designers to understand cultural diversity. So in Korea, KIDP make efforts to uh, provide young designers with opportunities to experience cultural diversity uh, through education. I'm going to uh, introduce some uh, examples of design educational program uh, that we have been organizing. Uh, the first is the International Integrated Design Camp. We have been organizing IIDC uh, since 2018, a design engineering workshop where we invite students from different backgrounds and culture to Korea. Each year, students work on the biggest issue of that year. Students work in teams on their own topic relevant to the theme. For example, last year's topic was design against pandemic, and students came up with products, services, and systems that went uh, along with the theme. Uh, students uh, also have the opportunity to network uh, with fellow designers who came from uh, different countries, cultures, majors, and interests. Last year, IIDC uh, went virtual uh, due to COVID, and 76 tutors and students from 90 countries and 48 countries companies and schools participated. These are some of uh, the outcomes from last year, uh, which was conducted under the theme uh, Design Against Pandemic. This camp is a great opportunity to learn about how to work within a multicultural environment, communicating with others to solve a common problem. Uh, the second case to understand cultural diversity are the uh, industry academic project done with global companies. Uh, we support uh, Korean students to participate in a uh, design project with global companies. One successful experience is a project done with DesignWorks, a creative design studio of BMW Group in Munich, Germany. Uh, what makes this project meaningful is that it uh, provides uh, both BMW and um, a Korean student uh, the opportunity to understand and uh, run different cultures. Uh, sorry. Uh, here are the results of the BMW uh, project done over the past two years that are being uh, revealed for the first time. Uh, in 2019, BMW provided a mission uh, on how the concept of mobility will uh, change in Korea in the distant uh, future, about 20 or 30 years from now. This is the idea proposed by students. Uh, these are new concepts of future mobility. And the app service. We know we need to uh, close the session in a second. So you have one more minute to go. Um, okay, okay. Sorry. So uh, the older project uh, conducted online between Germany for six, six months. And it is, this is a result from 2020.
Okay, I, I think through, through this project, students came face to face with the latest global design issue and experience the design process of BMW. And three, three of students who took part in this project were hired as a, a design internet uh, design works in Munich. And good news is two of them will be hired as full-time junior designer starting September. Okay, so we will continue to organize activity to promote cultural diversity. Thank you. So unfortunately, uh, we are running out uh, our time. So I should close this session in a second. Uh, uh, it, it is really pity we don't have enough time to uh, talk about more about the issue and uh, deep diving in, in it. But uh, I hope uh, we can have a next time opportunity. And uh, thank you again, speakers and those who have been joining us from uh, around the world. And thank uh, World Design Organization and the, the team, especially Natalie and Sarah, uh, for your sleepless day, probably, to run the talk for 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's been a great honor uh, and happy to be part of uh, World Industrial Design uh, talk. Uh, with all of you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed, I think you covered a lot of material, a lot of ground in the last 30 minutes. So I'm sure that our audience is eager and keen to learn more. I think there were some powerful statistics also really interestingly shared inside, uh, inside those presentations. So